Hi, welcome to another episode of Tea with Tara. My next two guests are people that you have seen a million times, unless you've been hidden away somewhere, I don't know. But Pepper and Molly were two famous characters in the 1982 movie Annie. And these days, Roseanne Sorrentino and Tony Angasandi are in a new movie called To Duty. So please welcome Roseanne and Tony Ann. Thanks for being here, ladies. Thank Hello, you. thanks for having us. So I want to get started um, with the question that a lot of people want to know is how you both got into show business to begin with. How did this all begin for you? You want to go first, Roseanne? Oh, oh, okay. You go first. Um, all right. Uh, well, from a very young age, apparently, uh, my mom says I was two years old in my playpen watching Donnie and Marie show, <laughs> and I showed an interest in music. I rock back and forth with my spoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so at three years old, I started dance lessons. And um, after dance class, our dance teacher would have us sit in a circle and we would sing while we waited for our parents to come get us. And um, my dance teacher said that I had a really nice voice and, you know, maybe I should do singing lessons. So at this point, I was around three and a half. Um, and my mom said, do you want to take singing lessons? And I said, yeah, because I love dancing and singing. So um, actually, I was almost four years old when I started singing lessons. Um, so I started singing lessons, um, with a local coach, Sal Dupree. Um, and one thing led to another. He said, wow, she's a powerhouse. You know, she should get her an, a manager. So, um, he had me sign up with a manager. I think I was like maybe six months to a year into taking lessons with him, signed up with the manager. And then I would say, let's see, I was five and a half when I auditioned for Annie. So, um, yeah, five and a half. So, wow. um. It just seemed like everything snowballed from like four years old to five and a half. I started, you know, the singing lessons, got the, the manager, was called to go try out for Annie. I was obviously too young for the role of Annie. Um, a few weeks later, they were looking for principal roles. I went and tried out. I uh, had to sing tomorrow, I remember. Um, I brought cheap music. And um, I remember after the audition coming out, and my mom said, where's your sheet music? And I said, they want to see you. So apparently they were impressed with, you know, my, my voice. And uh, that's that's how it all happened. It's crazy. And then I was I met John Houston after that, the choreographer. And that's how it all began. I was very blessed. Um, your turn, Roseanne. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, something very similar. You know, from a young age, I was always, like, entertaining and performing. And um, what I used to do is take my record player uh, kids, those are, you know, phonographs with vinyl records. <laughs> and um, yeah. I would have it under one arm and I would have my records under the other and I would walk into the neighbor's yards without being invited, plug in, <laughs> sing a couple songs and move on to the next. And um, I got an opportunity from my babysitter who was at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and they needed girls for the prime of Miss Jean Brody. And so she asked my mom, you know, can, can Roseanne do it? And I was like, please, 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 please. <laughs> so I did it. And that's sort of where I really said, wow, this is fun. I like the whole environment. I love the whole thing. And then when she took me, well, she bought me the Annie album. And I absolutely fell in love with the show. Oh, and yeah, I forgot. I, I did go see the Broadway show, yeah, when I was four. Yep. <laughs> and loved I, it. And I warped the, the first album. My mother had to get me a second one because I played it so much. And uh, when she took me to see the show, I just kept telling her, I want to be Annie. I want to be Annie. I want to be Annie. And she was like, just watch the show. And I'm like, no, I want to be Annie. <laughs> and you... um, she took me to, to a recording studio to record me singing tomorrow over Andrew McArdle, figuring that would be the end of it. And gave it to a friend, who had a friend, who had a friend, who had a friend. And she figured she'd never hear anything. And then she got a call that, they wanted me to come and audition. And we didn't know what I was auditioning for, wow. but it wound up being the lead role. And so I toured around the country for a year and a half. And Garrison True, who was the casting director for Annie, came to see me and he wanted me to be Annie. But um, by the time I finished, I was too tall. First time and mm -hmm. only time in my life. <laughs> and, um, you know, but they were like, well, try out for Pepper. So I did. And um, and that's how I got into the movie. So you were still in the play when you tried out for the role of Pepper. I had it's just oh, okay. I had just finished my contract, and um, so I ended, and then they started casting. 
So it was perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So what was the audition process like for the movie Annie? I mean, I've never been in show business. I know nothing about that kind of stuff. What was it like for both of you? Well, it's interesting. If you if you watch, um, I think on YouTube, there's they actually show the process of there were there were thousands of girls from all over all over the country, um, and actually Lucy uh, Lucille, I mean Lucy Stewart, sorry Lucille Lucy Stewart, who played the part of July, um, was from England. So it just goes to show you that you know there was a stretch of how many people auditioned for this movie. And if you go on YouTube, you do see like they had girls lined up and just singing like little excerpts of the song the song will come out tomorrow, and then they would have them. Either if they were interested, you know what I mean, they'd move to one side and that kind of thing. It was just like constant, um, you know, just like a cattle call pretty much. Just keep everyone, you know, like I said, thousands of girls. Um, I just, it, I just, it just amazes me though, because I think sometimes I'm like, wow, I really was lucky <laughs> because there were so many cute kids, so many yeah. talented girls. And it's just, uh, you know, the blessing. I didn't, obviously, I didn't go through that because. Mm -hmm. They already had determined, you know, I was too old. I was too tall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my audition was very um, interesting because I'm sitting in the waiting room and the, the woman comes out and she calls my name and she says, what role are you auditioning for? And I said, Pepper. She goes, oh, Mr. Houston will never hire you. You're too pretty. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, well, that stinks. <laughs> so... I go in and he knew I was in the play. And so he wanted me to sit at a table across from him and sing as quietly as I could. I guess he wanted to see if I could do that because I was used to belting out these numbers every night. And, um, and I did, and then I got the part. And, and I remember the first thing I thought of was like, so I said to my mom, I go, does that mean I'm ugly? <laughs> <laughs> no. But, yeah. Um, so I didn't audition that way either, but I just remember seeing on YouTube, like there's, I think it's when they came down to us, you know, like that age group, like all the 10 year olds or whatever it was. And you saw like the top 10, like Mandy Peterson was in there. It was just like, they mm -hmm. had them all singing. They wanted to hear their voices. Uh, but my audition was also like, I had to go in and sing tomorrow. I remember. And then um, I just remember, like, I just remember their reactions. And then I remember coming down the hallway and my mom saying, where's your sheet music? And I said, they want to see you. That was just really exciting. My mom still talks about it to this day. Like, she's like, that was such a, you know, honor. But, yeah, that's a thrilling moment for a parent. Thrilling. Yeah. Now, you know, I was watching um, Kelly Clarkson a couple of months ago, right before Carol Burnett's big 90th birthday. And she was on there. And of course, Kelly asked her about her time on Annie. And... Oh. She had something really nice to say about all of you, because I know in show business, they say, be careful working with children and dogs or pets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Carol Burnett said um, that she loved all of you. And she said that she had never worked with so many professional children in all her life. I mean, you guys were really professional. So I was wondering, what was it like to work with her? Well, she was incredible. Incredible. Yes. Totally opposite than her character. She was wonderful, like a mother to all of us. Um, and we worked with her the most out of all the adults. Um, they were they were nice too. They, don't get me wrong; they were all so nice. But she was like she took time. You know, she took time to really care for us, play with us, make us laugh. You know? mm -hmm. When there was a, a break in the action, she didn't rush off to her trailer. She stayed okay. back. She talked to us. Um, you know, I remember talking to her about her show because I love the Carol Burnett show. And so she was, she was a really down to earth, great person. She's, mm. you think about it and you're like, I, well, she is not, yes, she's totally as nice as you want her to be. Yep. Nothing at all like Miss Hannigan. No, no, no total, no, no, opposite. <laughs> total opposite. <laughs> Did mm. you get any good advice from any of the actors, the older actors? Advice. I don't think I, I yeah, did. I don't remember specific advice. No, I didn't. You know, when when we weren't filming for me, um, I hung out a lot with the dance captains who were adults. I hung out with the older orphans who were, you know, the rest of the kids in the orphanage. Mm -hmm. And so, when we weren't on camera, I feel like we were just being kids. Right. Right. Now, did you get to hang out with Aileen a lot, or was she kind of off doing her own thing with her? Well, 
we we did here and there. We got to hang out with each other more, you know, than than with Aileen. You know, the, the other six of us, right? Six of us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the six of us would hang out a little more. But I, yeah, I would. I remember playing with her like Chinese jacks. <laughs> yeah, specifically, we'd play Chinese jacks together when she had, you know, a little a time off. I remember we were um, swimming together. Where was mm -hmm. that? Was that? Um, a place where she was staying or yeah I remember she had her 10th birthday there too we were at a pool right. and we swam with her here yeah. yeah so I mean we did do we did do kid things but she was you know she was in the majority of the movie so we had a lot more mm -hmm. downtime than she did right now everyone thinks of Pepper as the tough talking feisty character but Tony Ann your character was kind of feisty too I mean you were you know you were <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I held my own again. Yes, I, did. I held my own. Did. <laughs> and yeah. I'm wondering how you film a scene because Roseanne, we talked about this last time you were on, where Tony Ann had to hit you in the face with the mop, and mm -hmm. you said that was a real. She really hit you, right? Or she did. That, I did. Movie, no movie magic there. I no, did no, and I had I had some issues with that though. It's funny. I remember it to this day. Um, I had to hit, hit her with the mop, and in another scene, you're never fully dressed without a smile. I I throw my hand back and I hit her with the. A shoe too in the neck and i remember thinking oh i don't want to hurt her i don't want to hurt her but they were like and she said to me too roseanne was like it's okay hit me harder it's all right <laughs> i remember yeah, yeah so we're afraid with the mop too and i was like yeah don't man, just do, it. do it she's like bring the it harder you hit me then the fall will be real you know so yeah so she did she was able to do that without knocking any teeth out right she was she was so did you hmm. did you ladies have a favorite number that you did? Was it Hard Knock Life or Never Fully Dressed? Uh, I I actually remember I enjoyed both of them. I remember I had a flip into the laundry. Well, I didn't go into the laundry basket, but I remember when Annie did. I remember like putting my arms up and being all dramatic at the end of that scene. But I also did love You Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile. Yeah, um, they were both fun. What do you think? That Rosie? was yeah. Never Fully Dressed was probably my favorite, and I yeah. think it was my favorite because I remember doing the play. And that was such a great number. Yeah, and the yeah. audience always went wild when the kids mm -hmm. were dancing. And I was like, I wanted to do that number so bad, you know? Yeah. That when I finally got to do it, I kind of just really relished um, being able yeah. to do that. Are there any outtakes to Annie? Like a gag reel somewhere? Um, you guys, were you guys good about, I mean, how did you even get through half those scenes without laughing, first of all? Or did you? Well, we... we we did. I remember one scene, especially, um, it's the scene right after the mop, actually. Um, that was, this was brought up, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I was telling someone, that after I hit Roseanne with the mop, after Pepper, um, I run out and I say, they're going to do something bad to Annie. And the, the other girls say, who is? And I said, they are. And they say, who's they? I say, Miss Hannigan. And then I would make a face because my back, my the back of my head was to the camera. So I, after I said that, I, I made a face at them and they would laugh hysterically. And then they would say, cut, you know, John Houston, I would, we would do it again. I would make a face. I don't know if Roseanne remembers it. And he, finally, they, they were like, she's making us laugh. They, <laughs> they reviewed what I was doing. Said, oh, and he was like, now. yeah, no. And then he's like, she's truly a Molly. I remember. <laughs> he's like, it was funny though. That was one little thing I remember. But what uh, was it like working with John Houston? I mean, had he ever done a movie like this before? A movie with children? No, no this was his first yeah, time doing that. He was very, I remember him being very nice, like a grandfather kind of type, you know, figure. Um, yeah, but this was his first, right, exactly. He did so many different kinds of films. He was really nice. And, and a lot of what we did was rehearse prior. And then when we were filming, he would come in. So he really wouldn't, if he liked everything that the assistant directors and the choreographers did, he didn't really change too much. But if there was right. something you were doing specifically that he wanted to change, right. then he would talk to you. But um, yeah, he was he was a very nice man. Mm -hmm. Now, the, from the interviews that I've seen with Aileen Quinn, she has often mentioned that there were sequels to Annie. Were you guys aware of this or were you supposed to be part of the sequels at all? Um. I Sequels I know that they did remakes. Uh, remakes. Sequel, I don't know, like a sequel, as far as a sequel, I wish they did a sequel, you know, for our, but I, I know that there were some remakes of the movie, um, which honestly, I, I haven't even seen, like, I, I can't tell you I've seen the, the entire um, movie of any of them, but. <laughs> um, I wish they could do a remake with Molly and Pepper. 
Yeah. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Molly and Pepper all grown up. <laughs> yeah. Or was, then. And we're now we're friends. Yeah. Now, I was reading online, I was reading on Wikipedia, so I don't know how true it is, but they were talking about the characters, Molly and Pepper and the rest of them, that Daddy Warbucks was supposed to adopt them. He had adopted them and they all became sisters. Now, where did this, there, was this Well, trip? the only thing I could think of was that is there's, um, there is a part that was cut out in the film. And I remember standing next to Aileen in the party scene and she says something Said, like oh can you find a home for molly too she actually says i'm i'm next to her and she mentions me and i say uh, and, i mean i didn't say anything but he says oh sure you know it, it, there's it's actually somewhere on youtube and there's also another part of me with a clown and he's juggling an apple and i take a bite out of it so there are parts that were going to be in the movie that they cut out mm -hmm. yeah and and i think it was so, just implied <laughs> in the in the stage yeah. musical that Warbucks took in all of the girls. True, yeah. Now that would have been a cool movie. It would have been great if they would have done other movies with your characters. No would have. How great. did life how did life change for you guys once Annie came out and you went back to school and went back to your your own life, your personal lives? How did it change for you? I mean, did your friends treat you different or was it, it did well, it my friends didn't treat me different, but you, you learn who your friends are when you come back. You know what I mean? Like, right. so your friends, you just pick up where you left off. Um, and I, I really, I can't say I had any issues, but you know, there's always, there's always a few in the crowd that'll be like, ah, oh, she got this only because only, you know, the only reason yeah. she got this is because she was Molly. For example, I was, I made the cheerleading team like two years later and I only got it because I was Molly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so right. you'd have someone say that, but your friends... It, you, you just flip, like I said, you picked up where you left off and it was great. They, they asked questions and it was fun to, you know, talk about it when they wanted to. And they always, all my real friends would say, would say, you're so humble. Why don't you talk about it? I would brag if I was in a movie. I was like, nah, you wouldn't, you know, cause I know I'm just a regular kid. I was a right, you know, I, I just was happy to be back with my friends. Of course I was happy and proud of, you know, the experience I had, but, um, I'm just, just like them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. For, for me, it was a little different because I missed those years where you, um, like I came back into middle school of all times and I had kind of missed out on what music are they? I was listening to show tunes. I was going to Broadway. I was, mm -hmm. so I missed out on that. So fitting back in for me was a little tough at mm -hmm. the age of, of 12 going on 13 because I really wasn't. I remember a boy in, in middle school asked me to go out with him. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, thinking he meant to date. I didn't mm -hmm. know that meant you were going steady. And I'm like, I'm 13. <laughs> you know, like I thought he wanted to go on a date. So like, I had no idea about what the latest lingo meant and things like that. So it was a little bit of an adjustment period. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing the show, a few of my very good friends and their families, when we were close enough to New York, whether it was um, Pennsylvania or Delaware, they they came to see me. So that was that was really neat. And what was it like to see your image on everything from toys to lunch boxes or whatever you guys were on? And also a very important question for you, Roseanne: Why was Pepper's hair blonde? <laughs> That is the <laughs> on your a little extra question. We wish um, we knew the answer to that. I have no idea. He ran out of paint. It, it, <laughs> it the... aggravates me to this day, but it is what it is. But at least on the um, collector plates and on mm -hmm. all the other stuff, you know, they got it right. I have dark hair, but I, I don't know why Pepper was blonde. Well, you have highlights going on now, so you kind of look. <laughs> yeah, yes, I guess I just yeah. follow suit. <laughs> yeah, they look good. So it's been That's over good. 40 years since Annie came out. And I remember, I think my aunts took me to see it the first time. And then I went with my mom. And she took me again and again. And of course, I was like many children obsessed with this movie. And in fact, when it went out of the theater, I actually cried. I don't, mm -hmm. I was so emotional. It was just, oh my God, I can never see this again. And then my dad came home with the VHS tape, the VHS tape, and that was all was good. But what <laughs> do you think the movie still to this day has enjoyed such longevity? 
What do you think it is about Annie, the 1982 version especially, because I can't watch the other ones, no offense to the other people, hmm. but, right. you know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I believe you always That's, what, we always, <laughs> that's <laughs> what I always say. I, I think that it started with the, um, with the play and that it just resonated with so many people on so many different levels and people yeah. really enjoyed it. And then they made the movie. And while the movie wasn't, didn't exactly follow the musical, the stage musical, I think it was close enough and it, it had the same message. And um, I just think it's just one of those movies that right. you remember. When the soundtrack, the music, I think the music just makes people feel a certain way because we've gotten, we've spoken about it. We've gotten um, fan mail over the years where they just, people are just like, thank you so much. You, you, you know, you made my, our childhood that the, the songs just make us cry. <laughs> like, it's just such a good feeling yeah. and I feel good. And, and I think parents who were older, who saw the play and then the play closed mm -hmm. and then the movie came out. And so now they're sharing that experience with their children. Right. You know, when I was a kid, I saw this on the stage and now they made it a movie and, and it's something that people share with their, with their kids. Right. Yeah. Especially today. I mean, I think we need something happy and positive like that, especially in the climate that we find ourselves in. Right. Oh, a hundred percent. Is your fan base, I know you guys do a lot of meet and greets. That's where I first met you. Um, do you find that your fans are around my age? Because I was born in 1976. Now, are they our age? Or are you? do you have actually new fans who are starting to know who you are? You know what? I think a lot are your age or our age. Um, but there are younger ones. They're definitely. And I think it's like what Roseanne said, too, because they grow up because their parents are showing them, look at this, this, this awesome movie <laughs> from when I was your age, you know, that kind of thing. So um, we, it's kind of, it's, it's both. And you know what? There's a lot of actually males so many male fans yes so many male oh. fans it's amazing and i love it yeah you know the other night i was at my my friend's house a very good friend of mine and for whatever reason she was she was so funny she was embarrassed to say but she's like i never saw the movie and so she <laughs> says i want to watch it with you so we had a movie night at her house and we watched yeah. we watched the movie and it probably was the first time in many, many years where i sat and watched it from start oh, to finish and yeah. it was it, it brought back so many memories you know mm -hmm. and so we would periodically pause it i would tell her funny stories i told her about the mop and i told her about yeah the and, you know so it and kind of got a different perspective but it was neat that here we are these 250 yeah. plus women watching <laughs> on a friday night drinking wine <laughs> awesome now, you guys have obviously encountered many, many fans. And the first time that I met you in Phoenixville, PA, I think, for Superfest, which was in mm -hmm. 22, yeah. and Aileen was there as well, I sent my friend over first. You probably don't remember that, but I sent her over first because she said, but you want to meet them so bad. I said, I do, but I'm so nervous because I, I'm not, I get so shy meeting people that I've seen on in movies, on TV all my life. So- and I know you have a lot of fans who think that way. Have you ever been starstruck, though? What celebrities it's, it's, have you both You met? know what? It's funny that you say that because um, people have said, too, oh, you're in a movie. You know, like, they're just – but you're right. You, you've you seen them your whole life on the screen. So it's like it's so sur it's surreal, right? Mm -hmm. up to them, I understand. It's funny oh, yeah. because um, we were at the uh, – what was it? The Atlantic City show, Roseanne. And I was so excited to meet – Oh, the God. girl Annie from um, Halloween, from the original Halloween. Annie, I, I go up there, <laughs> and she makes a video for my sister, and I'm like, "Oh my God, it's Annie from Halloween!" <laughs> you know, so yeah. that was pretty cool. It's the same yeah. thing. I think I was that way with um, mm -hmm. with Andrew McCardle when right. I finally met her. You know, mm -hmm. she was my Annie idol, and yeah. um, and I remember meeting her, and I was just mm -hmm. like. You don't understand. <laughs> You're yeah. the reason that I did what I did. You right. know, and that huge, huge statement. And and I'm sure that Tony and you've had people say that to you, or you know, I've had people say to me or something similar, like you are an inspiration or whatever. Yeah, that, inspiration. Right. That's an amazing thing right. to have somebody tell you. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't take that lightly. That's like 
No, because it's like you must have. We must have done something, right? Right? <laughs> like, yeah, you, exactly. kind of, you know, it's just it's just me. Uh, like I'm not that great, but like some people really, they're like, wow, thank you, and it's just it's just like a nice feeling. Yeah, it is. It's it has to be a surreal experience because when you see you guys on TV, I mean, I've watched Danny a million times, and besides meeting both of you and Aileen, I also met one time. Jennifer Beals, who was in Flashdance, oh, yeah. I got to ask oh, yeah. her a question. And I remember when the guy gave me the microphone and said, okay, ask her a question afterwards. <laughs> and I was shaking like a leaf thinking, Aww. oh my gosh, you know, it is a surreal mm -hmm. thing. Celebrities. Uh, now take me about, take, take me to life after Annie. What was that like for, now you talked a little about it with your friends mm -hmm. and stuff, but where did life take you? Did you work on any other movies? Did you work on the stage at all? I did um, a couple movies and a couple commercials after that. Annie was my biggest role. Um, I did uh, a movie called The Children's Story that you can find uh, with James Clavell. That you can find on YouTube. Um, and um, I did a Cheerios commercial. I did a voiceover for Bounty's Paper Towels, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> and then theater. I did theater. I did um, theater when I was younger. And then I really got into stage when I had my daughters and we all did it together, which was so cool because they showed an interest and then I got back into it. So that's been great. I did a few things after audition for a lot. I did a, a play called Sacraments, which was off Broadway when Ironically, I was too old to play Annie in the movie, but I was at the time probably 14 or 15, 15, playing at one point a seven-year-old, oh, wow. making her communion. So um, <laughs> I did that. But then after that, I just, I, I made the decision to, well, my parents were getting divorced, so it was harder for me to get in and out of the city on auditions. Yeah. But I made, I made the decision that I just want to go to school. Right. I want to be with my friends and I don't have any regrets, yeah. but sometimes I go, Oh, I wonder. Same. I, That's the I same exact that. story. <laughs> yeah. Same. Now you've both done movies. You've both done theater. Which do you prefer? Mm -hmm. Do you like film or theater more? That's interesting. I, hmm. They're so different. They're so different. They are. Uh, but, but yet they're the same. You know what I mean? Because you're still, working as a group to create a project, a masterpiece for people to watch. Um, but they're very different. Um, I think theater, I guess I, I feel. you get the immediate feedback. Yeah. You, um, you, if the joke is funny, you get the laugh. If the scene do. is touching, you hear them kind of, oh, and take that gasp, you know? Definitely. And mm -hmm. you get the applause and everything. So you get that immediate feedback, which is... do is a really cool thing. Now, Tony, and I've seen you on YouTube um, doing some singing, which you have an amazing voice, by the way. Thank and you. I was just wondering, do you have a CD out or will you have a CD out? Available? I do. You know what? I made a CD years ago um, and I just recently made more copies of it because people have been asking. So I do. And I'm actually going into the studio again tomorrow, actually, to help um, my friend, who uh, a male friend of mine, who uh, we used to have... Um, we we did like club music back in the day, <laughs> like club songs, all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna make a Christmas album. So tomorrow we're gonna make some Christmas music in the studio. Oh. Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> and Roseanne, do you do yeah. any singing at all? Uh, I still do sing. Um, I haven't made any, you know, CDs or anything like that. But um, I actually, now that I'm retired, I want to start taking some voice lessons again because I, I feel like my voice is out of shape and I don't I can sing right now but to sing like eight shows a week I don't think my voice is really up to where it should be and so I want to work on that that's something that I'm working on and now you're both in a new movie called to duty Call, yes Call to duty so yes. what was, how did you both become involved in this film and what was it like to step onto a, a set together for the first my, time in all these years it's, it's funny because my sister the, the the director of it had been my sister my youngest sister's photographer and he was also you know he, he directed film he was starting to direct films so then she had told him who i was and um he was interested in you know having me come and read for a part and then I, um, and then he he knew that I was in touch with Roseanne, so he was interested in Roseanne too. 
And that's how it all just kind of snowballed. And it was it's really it was really fun. It was a really it's like a Top Gun, a girl's version of Top Gun. Um, it, it's really cool. You got to check it yeah. out. <laughs> it, it was it was a, a lot of fun, and it was kind of cool to be on the set with Tony Ann again now in a, a whole different way because now we're both adults, you know, and um, we were just kind of we had reconnected, but then there was a long span of time, and yeah. I think since then it's been more constant and right. more like it was nice just kind of getting to know each other as adults again. Right. So can you tell me a little about your characters? So um, I am Grace Kelly, the mm -hmm. national security advisor. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. my part is basically when, when things start to happen, you know, I'm questioning all of the commanders and the admirals and everybody who's mm -hmm. in charge and, making sure they're, you know, following the the, the law and not breaking yeah. the rules or whatever. So, um, so that's me. I'm, I'm yeah. very powerful. I'm very powerful. I'm very powerful. Yeah. And I'm Commander Moscow. So I, um, I'm the commander. And uh, so I have to make some tough decisions. Um, and I'm just, I'm very firm with the, with the wing girls. And, you know, I'm telling them this is how it's going to be. And, and then the one girl, I lay a guilt trip on her at the end <laughs> to say, what would your dad want you to do? You know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I actually saw the movie. It was really amazing. I saw it on Amazon Prime. Great. And I was just wondering how the both of you prepared for your roles. Hmm. Did you do any, did you have any, did any of the girls in the movie have any military um, training? Did the military work with anybody or? You know what? I don't know if they did. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't. Uh, I kind of just went with it. We got the script and we just kind of, you know, found our character. And then if he liked it, you know, certain things he wanted differently, we would do that. But uh, we kind of just, right, Roseanne, I think we just kind of yeah. created our own um, version. <laughs> I think he he re he did a lot of his own research he did. He did. to be accurate with the military. But as far as the military being involved, maybe right. that one scene in the airplane hangar and he got permission, yeah. but other than that, um, yeah, no, everybody kind of just this was an independent film, so the budget was small, and so you had to really sort of make uh, do your own research, figure out your own character, and right. put it all together. Right. So, did the process of making this film change anything about your perception regarding the people who serve in the military? Uh, no, I, I, um. I'm still uh, no, I, I'm not. I can't say it changed anything. So I just admire them still, and I appreciate you know everyone who has oh yeah served our country. And my my husband actually was in the army for two years, so um, and he actually has a little part in this movie, right? He does. He does. He's um, and he's amazing. He, yeah. he's, he's in the flashback scene. He's yes. um, her father. Yeah, the lead's father. It's like it's it's cool. He was so proud. He's he's like spreading the word. Like, see, watch me in my first film. He did yeah, a good job. So Has he been bitten by the acting bug now? Any more? You know what? He said he would do it again. He's like, yeah, I, I would do it again. <laughs> so, anyone out there who needs <laughs> flashback scene? He was That's really so really good. He it was actually the only time in the film where I got a lump in my throat. That's how good. Aww. it was. wow. He's a natural. <laughs> he is. A natural. <laughs> what nice. message do you want fans to take away from Call to Duty? Girls can, girls, girl power. Girls girl can power. do right. it. Women, True. you know, women um, are strong. They are. And women are good thinkers and they are, you know, methodical and everything. And, um, and I think sometimes that's the better way to be because we're not we don't shoot from the hip we kind of look at everything and we think about everything and we and we do that in a very short amount of time and i think maybe being moms you have to be like right a couple of kids running around you have to be able to assess the situation and make <laughs> a decision and, and stick to it and That's so exactly right yeah yeah and i think that um it's it was especially today in in the world that we live in i think it's a very important message to to see that even these tough girls who can fly these big jets mm -hmm. are still, you know, they still worry about everything else uh, mm -hmm. when, when she worries about her team and she doesn't want to put them in harm's way. You know, 
that's the way women think. And so I don't say that it should all be like that, but I think having women involved in things like this give the full perspective. So do you guys have any more projects that you're working on together? Well, we've heard that there's going to be a call to duty too. We're we're hoping that was great. I would love to be in the second one. Um, Yeah. I hope I get a promotion in this one. Yeah. 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 As far as anything else, we're do. I don't know. We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. <laughs> we'll we'll make something. it happen. We're we're yeah. doing our, our signings right now. Fine. Yep. And um, enjoying that. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, you don't know what the future holds. You just, no. if you would have told me after the movie ended that years later Tony Ann and I would be doing these signings and we would be, <laughs> uh, we'd have done a movie together, I would have been like, what? But. Yeah. Here we are. It's been like 41 years, right? Since Annie came out. Is that right? About yeah. Years. Wow. Yes, 41, probably 41, 42, because it was uh, 40. 41. Yeah, it's 41. Yeah, it was the 40th anniversary last year. So it's 41. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do any yeah. of your children, do any of your, um, now I know, Roseanne, you told me your daughters are not in the acting business, correct? No, my oldest daughter, she does the, we both do the stand up comedy together. So she does stand-up comedy, and the younger one wants no part of it. <laughs> hey, you know what? You just have to – everyone's different. You just don't know. Cause, um, because when my kids were little, they both showed an interest, you know, in singing and dancing. And I was like, yes. I was so happy because, you know, of course, I love it. Um, then my younger one, as she was maybe about 11 or 12, she said, no, nah, I'm finished with this. I want to just do sports. And she's a great athlete. So she just went into, the, you know, the sports – um, she went into all the sports and my other daughter, Molly, though, still loves to perform. She loves to sing. She actually was in the Miss New Jersey pageant, got second runner up and she's going to be doing it again this year. So, um, you know, you just never know that you can't, you can't make anyone do something they don't want to do. They have to love it. They have to want it. Um, I'm just happy they did for a while and Molly still does. <laughs> so your, your daughter, Molly, is she named after anybody? Specific. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, <laughs> my character. I always said that. I was like, my first daughter, I'm gonna name her all. You give her something to talk about, right? And I like the name, so it works out. Yeah. You know. What is it like for your kids when they first saw you on TV as as Molly and Pepper? Were they, you know, like that's mom up there? Or were they? I remember interested? showing them when they were real little, and they were like, "Oh, that's cool." Like you know, they weren't really fake. <laughs> they right. were just like, "Oh, that yeah. was you when you were little," you know. Um. Yeah, so they think it's, you know, it's cool. And a lot of their friends think it's, like, amazingly cool. And then they're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what she did when she was six years old. You know, <laughs> that's just funny. Yeah, my, my kids now, I think, they get more of a kick of it, kick out of it telling their friends who don't mm-hmm. know. And yeah. they, they like their friend's reaction mm-hmm. more than anything. You know, when they were younger and they would be flipping through the TV channels, I'd hear, Mom, you're on TV. Yeah, yeah. you're on TV. <laughs> yeah so now you're doing comedy Roseanne you're still doing the comedy with your daughter I am I'm still doing stand-up comedy it's a little it's a little slow in the summer right now but that's okay it'll pick up again I'm actually going to be in um Mohegan Sun on August 24th so I'll be performing there so that's I'm excited about that but uh yes I'm doing that and uh I recently retired after 31 years in education so I am um kind of getting my footing and seeing what's happening there, you know. And now you have um, a new venture that you're on that I see you on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Which- yes, I do. I am I am uh, selling, I'm a beauty guy, a beauty <laughs> guy for gotcha. Lime Life uh, skincare and, make- and cosmetics. And, um, you know, it, I've tried different things over the years and everything but I'm absolutely like in love with this stuff I love it I'm I'm so I'm all in I'm so all in I think it's a great Mm -hmm. product and um and I was saying this morning I don't did you see any of the live this morning Tara yes so I said you know I wouldn't have to touch up my makeup and then you caught me touching up this eye because I forgot I I forgot I had makeup on and I went like this the (laughs) you know before we came up here but I haven't really done anything to my makeup all day long. and it's I love it. Awesome. It looks so glowy. You look great. Dewy, yeah, whatever you want to say. <laughs> glowy and dewy. That's my Yeah. Own. Yeah. So I really love the product and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And so I'm, I'm 
you know, I'm just going and it's perfect for me. I, I love to be on a camera and I clearly I can't shut up. So I, I <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked out well. <laughs> And Tony Ann, you said you were going into the studio to record a Christmas. Yes, song? tomorrow. Yep, going in to record a a song that I don't even <laughs> honestly I haven't heard the whole thing of it yet. It's like my friend wrote it, and we're just gonna put like little pieces together tomorrow. So it's always it's always fun to go in there and. Is your music a, available? Will it be available on Amazon or on yes. your site? Maybe yes. Mm -hmm. Amazon. Yep. And and where are you guys appearing next for the, your next Annie meet and greet? We, we are Long we're Island. in Plainview, Long Island yep. on August 19th, which is exciting. It's our first time on Long Island. Um, Tony Ann actually has the bulk of the driving to do this time. Yes. <laughs> but yep. it's nice. They're going to come out the night before and they're going to stay in my house and we're going to hang out. That'll be fun. And then December 2nd, we have Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Yep. Awesome. Well, ladies, it was so great. Tony and Roseanne, I'm so thankful that you were on here to share what it was like to be an Annie, what it's like to do a movie now after all these years, and where you'll be next so your fans <laughs> could come out and see you guys. And yeah. it's so great to see you, and I really wish you the best of luck in everything you do. I hope I hope you make Call of Duty, too, and I hope you do more. Yes, movies. me too. Me too, too. Thank you so much for having us. Thank, oh, you, thank so you so much. much. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah.